Greetings gamers, Ian Higton from Eurogamer here and I've spent about five hours legging it around a preview build of Techland's open world zombie survival sim, Dying Light, kicking the undead in the face and setting fire to the human. Now, Techland's previous zombie kickathon franchise, Dead Island, was a glitchy mess. An ugly first person melee fest with clumsy combat, dull mission structures, and unlikable characters. Its main redeeming feature was the hilarity caused by the comedy ragdolling of the game's dopey walkers, which, thanks to the rather low budget production of the game, happened rather a lot. Dying Light, on the other hand, also features glitches, clumsy combat, dull mission structures, unlikable characters, comedy zombie ragdolling, and wait a minute, did, did that guy just faint? <laughs> But it's also had a bit of a cash injection from Techland's new publishers Warner, which has allowed them to put a brand new coat of polish on the formula. So has the power of a new generation of consoles and the bigger budget made a noticeable improvement on the gameplay. Behold, here's five ways Dying Light makes up for Dead Island, sort of. <laughs> One of the first things that will strike you when you play Dying Light is how gorgeous the graphics are. There are times when they look really special, and I think you can agree this view is pretty stunning. I'd even go as far as to say this horizon is better looking than the Karate Mountain ranges of Far Cry 4. Distant towers burn, ash floats around the city like big grey snowflakes, and flocks of birds circle in the skies probably about to feed on the mountains of corpses that litter the landscape. It does a great job in conjuring up a believable apocalyptic playground, so it's kind of a shame then that Techland had to shoehorn in some of their trademark comedy characters to shatter that illusion. Yes? Here's your movie and your chocolates. Wait till mom see this! Oh, Gazi wins again! Hooray for Gazi! Right. Dying Light's natural movement system has been described by them as groundbreaking, which it totally isn't because I've seen this kind of stuff in Brink and Mirror's Edge to name just a couple of examples. It does however work pretty well and once I was comfortable with the controls I was able to get quite a nice flow going. Chaining, jumping, running, vaulting and sliding together made the standard fetch quest runs a lot more interesting than they were in Dead Island, especially when I started experimenting with shortcuts. The first person viewpoint works well to create a sense of vertigo when you make the larger jumps or scale tall buildings, however it doesn't always work perfectly and I found myself glitching through walls or stuck between objects on quite a few occasions. The Dead Island games were a lot of things. Dumb, crass and stupid are some good words to throw at them like rocks to a zombie's face. One word you couldn't describe them as though would be scary. You might have panicked a bit at times when you were overwhelmed, but it was never heart in the mouth, hold your breath tense. Enter then Dying Light's Volatiles, super zombies that only come out at night and are almost impossible to kill. Catch their attention and, at least in the early sections of the game, you are pretty much dead. Your only hope then is to utilise your weird spidey sensibility that isn't really explained that well at all to highlight the volatiles on your mini-map and then hopefully you can sneak past them without getting- OH MY GOD! Ah! Ah! Run! Oh god it's gonna eat me! Ah! Unfortunately, the tension is ruined quite badly by the fact that if you die, you respawn at the closest save point with little to no penalties, which is kind of disappointing, but I guess at least it's a step in the right direction. Down on the ground, Dying Light's world is a bit brown, and the buildings all look quite similar. That means at first glance everything looks a little bland. That is, until you start exploring. There are some really cool hidden locations in this game, 
Locations that often take a little bit of working out to get into. But when you manage it, you normally find some kind of cool collectible or useful weapon at the end. I had the most fun in Dying Light just hoofing it around the world, trying to find my way into buildings and yoinking all the cool stuff before using it to bully zombies. The preview build I played was single player only, but I can imagine this type of open world gameplay being thoroughly enjoyable when you have a few friends in tow. <laughs> if you've made an open world game before that's been kind of mediocre at best, how can you improve on that formula? Well, the easiest way would be to rip off an open world game that's actually good, namely Far Cry 3. It's not outright plagiarism by any stretch, but Techland have definitely been inspired by Ubisoft's game. For instance, Dying Light has safe zones that must be liberated, just like Far Cry 3's outposts. Clear out the zombies, close the gates, restore the power and blammo, a brand new open world checkpoint. There's also quite a lot of climbing puzzles which bring to mind Far Cry 3's radio towers. In fact, this bit here might as well be a radio tower section from Far Cry 3, considering it's a radio tower I was climbing. Still, nice view though, eh? Geronimo! <laughs> oh, and how about these looting animations as well? That is straight up Far Cry 3. To be honest, I'm surprised Techland haven't shoved some hunting in here as well. Far Cry 3 isn't the only open world game that Dying Light has been inspired by though. These lockpicking mini games are identical to the ones found in Skyrim. But hey, it's the sincerest form of flattery or something, I guess. So then, they say you can't polish a poo, but in this case that's not quite true. Dying Light has a lovely level of polish to it, so much so that on the surface it makes the game a rather fun little jaunt through zombie apocalypseville, parkouring here, drop kicking enemies there. However, once I'd scratched the surface just a little bit, that same old Dead Island poo stink was soon right up in my nose holes. Dying Light is Dead Island with a new name, a new location and a higher budget, but deep down it looks like it's going to retain Techland's signature scruffiness. It's bound to be fun for those who enjoy a bit of brainless action and comedy killing, but anyone after a more rewarding experience may want to set their sights on another game. Thanks for watching, please do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe to Eurogamer if you want more video gamey goodness in your subscriptions feed. Right, that's the blurb out of the way, let's go back to kicking zombies onto spikes. Kablowie!